<clears throat> Welcome everyone. We will be talking about digital business and e-commerce. I will give you a brief introduction to the world of digital business and e-commerce thereby. So, digital business and e-commerce, what are they and how are they relevant to us as a consumer, to us as a producer, to us as an entrepreneur? If you need to understand this, you need to understand the terms called digital business and the concepts as an online business. Revenue and technology models by reviewing alternative applications through act activities and various examples in, in the form of case studies as a case might be. So that is what we will be talking, right? <clears throat> so impact of electronic communication and traditional business. What have they done across, across the medium, across the globe? across the demography, across the population, you name it and people are getting hooked up to the social media platform. People are getting hooked up to the internet. In fact, people are finding solutions to their daily problems via net. So that's the impact that electronic communication is having. And if we are having getting moved by the internet revolution, it makes sense for a business, for an entrepreneur, for a company to move from traditional mode of operation to the digital mode of operation. So we need to understand the e-commerce, the digital business. What are the opportunities that presents out here? This is what we will be talking about here. Business adoption of digital technology for e-commerce and digital business, digital business risk and barriers to business adoption per se. Management responses to e-commerce and digital business thereby everything that comes around. We talk about the responses we talk about the competitors enhancement techniques we talk about customers engagement techniques these are all an outcomes of being present in an online platform as a digital business objectives remains the same thing as in defining the scope of the business digital business as the case might be we are going to talk anything and everything about e-commerce and the different elements thereby we need to understand the scenarios one by one summarize the main reason for the adoption of e-technologies or e-grouping or e-commerce why going digital makes sense per se and what are the barriers thereof to, for that for such kind of an adoption outline the ongoing business challenge of managing the digital business and e-commerce on the organization thereby how do we explain the scope the implication of digital business and the e-commerce to start what is the full range of benefits of introducing digital business and what are the risks? This is what we are going to ascertain. How do we evaluate our current digital business capabilities? As in what amount of this percentage of business comes from an online platform? As in what amount of percentage of business for our competitors comes from the online platform? Are there any parity to it? Can we enhance it? Can we leverage such kind of activities? So the impact of internet on business is plentiful. Andy Grove, the chairman of Intel says, one of the very early adopters of e-commerce has made meteorological analogy with the internet. He says, is the internet a typhoon force, a 10 times force, or is it a bit of a wind? Or is it a force that fundamentally alters our business? Way back, 26 years back, he has already made this observation internet can be a tsunami to the business revolution that comes around it tsunami in terms of the revenue that can be brought about it tsunami of the popularity that a brand name can enjoys around and that is what is the impact of business and internet has overall digital business opportunities yes we have a reach which is extensive you might have your business located in x countries x city but probably the audiences remains the whole global population. So you can service anybody and everybody over 1 billion user globally connected to a millions of product richness, detailed product information to around 20 billion plus pages and the pages are counting by the time you are listening to this particular video, you can add one, two, three billions easily to be indexed by Google's blogs, videos, and feeds. We are talking about the personalized message for the users, the affiliation, partnerships are the key to the network economy as the case might be. So what can exactly go wrong with transactional side? Many things, should I warn you people? Many things, for example, there might be customers who might be ordering just for the sake of fun. 
customers who might not be seriously about uh, seriously interested on the product or customers who are seriously intent interested but do not have the requisite fund at their disposal so it's a false order that has been made by customer incorrectly inputs orders probably this is something which comes around it a, a lot of times something that goes wrong and then you need in, you intended to order item x product x but you end up orders item y or product y or you intend to order item x product x n number of quantities but in place of n numbers of quantities you put an x number of quantities so that is what becomes a problem area altogether yes people are using hesitantly using to give all banking details all together how do we come across with it we are not comfortable after sales services may be hard to organize depending upon the location that comes around it people are interested data is getting breached people might be defrauded by their account altogether and there are many scam scamsters already on the prowl so yes there are risks to the transactional side let us understand if there are risks there are benefits too and that's the only reason what attracts them to the criminals to such kind of things so we might have checks and balances and it can be a foolproof system let me introduce you to the e-commerce and digital business thereof you are attending a role of a digital business team of global bank and you anticipate distinction between e-commerce and digital business let let me give you as an example so as an electronic commerce or e-commerce and electronic mediated information exchanges that happens takes place between an organization and its external stakeholders now stakeholders can be the vendors stakeholders can be end customer according to kalakota and winston 1997 refers to the different perspective of e-commerce let me count them one by one uh, communication perspective yes as uh, e-commerce perspective the delivery of information the product the services or the payment thereby you are making on on a via an online media not in person on a virtual medium that you are going across it a business process perspective the application of technology towards the automation of business transaction and workflows a service perspective as in enabling a cost cutting at the same time increasing the speed delivery and probably the experience of the end customer per se so we are looking for it and then online perspective the buying and selling of a product and an information on an online fashion with a with a click you can make a transaction altogether so yes a communication perspective a business process perspective a service perspective and an online perspective is what kalakota and winston stated in 1997 let us understand digital business or electronic business per se all electronically mediated information exchanges anything and everything we are we are marketing our product we are telling the unique selling propositions of the product we are telling the distinct capabilities of our product any form of communication is a part of your branding and a part of your communication is a part of your digital business per se both within an organization and external to the organization to the external stakeholder supporting a host of business process thereby so buy side e-commerce and sell side e-commerce buy side e-commerce is transaction between a purchasing organization and its supplier sell side e-commerce is an e-commerce transaction between a supplier organization and its customer per se that is what we are looking forward towards it so yes e-commerce transaction between purchasing organization and its supplier thereby so what is it we are looking into it look we are talking about buy sides e-commerce is this is buy buy side and this is a sell side e-commerce that comes around it so in a buy side e-commerce is what are your suppliers and small suppliers now these are all your vendors probably this is a supplier and the, uh, the supplier is getting it from vendor 1 vendor 2 vendor 2 is getting it from vendor 3 and 4 vendor 4 is actually sub supplying not only to vendor 3 but also to vendor 5 and things goes on this is your internet this is your transaction media that comes around it so everybody is spinning up and there is an operation or intermediary that comes up collates all the thing and transaction happens similar kind of activities happens even in the sell side of pattern altogether one needs to keep on track of it 
yes we are talking about the sell side e-commerce internet and the extranet thereby i hope you can understand the distinction between the buy side and the sell side the same procedures probably when we are going through it internet is facilitating facilitating the process thereby that is what is actually happening let us understand electronic commerce and electronic business to a some degree overlap each other's definitely is commerce is where the transactions of monetary effect takes place business is where you are actually propagating you are actually branding yourself you are actually letting the others know what exactly is good about your businesses there are there are many organization where electronic commerce and electronic business completely overlap each other's they are broadly equivalent in fact one cannot be distinguished from the other let's say a bank doing a business online so it's electronic commerce and electronic business is one of the same thing that comes around it whereas there's other propositions of electronic commerce is subset of an electronic business nothing but a subset of electronic business yes there are a host of other activities facilities that has been extended so electric electronic business is a much bigger term and electronic commerce the transaction is just a, a figment of or a percent of the business that the electro uh, that it comprises of now these are the three definitions of relationship between an e-commerce and the digital business thereby so yes we need to understand what is an internet internet remember is the gamut through which the world wide web anybody with a browser can access the net and probably gain certain useful or uh, not so useful information nevertheless internet is a part within the part of it is an extra net extra net is where in every supplier customers collaborators are collabor collaborating out here the full it's, it's a dedicated people you know for every domain for every industry for every company you have certain dedicated vendors dedicated people working around it so these are the people with an extra net which who works within the domain of their uh, domain of the know-how of the people and then there is called intranet intranet on the other hand it comprises of people within the organization extranet within the organization but external to the organization they are not on the payroll of the organization intranet is completely only wholly owned by the company thereby so please understand that difference between intranet extranet and internet thereby remember marketing is all about internet whereas marketing and purchasing is all about your extra net why purchasing because you are looking at your vendors marketing why because you are again looking at your distribution channel intranet is all about it department probably hr and so on and so forth will be taking care of it so let us understand intranet a private network within a single company using internet standards to enable employees to access share information using web and publishing technology thereby and that is what we are looking forward to next is extranet a service provided through internet and web technologies delivered by extending an intranet beyond a company to customers suppliers and collaborators per se that is what we are looking at extranet i have already explained to you internet means to the world extranet means to the external to the company but definitely an integral part of the operation of the company that means the vendors that means the distribution channel and so on so forth the collaborators the research agencies that would comprises of external whereas intranet is only wholly the employees that comes around it now let us understand how the evolution of web technologies actually happened around here you look it into it earlier times it was a standalone pcs pcs were known are still known as personal computers if you're not aware of it then probably then the file transfer protocol ftp came into place now this is where the usenet comes around it wherein we started with intranet with a a, a, a number of desktop a number of terminals connected via each other with lan or local area network this is where we moved around it from 80s to 90s over the pcs errors with wherein we have we were talking about windows we were talking about sgml we were talking about mac operating system and so on so forth but 1990 when the birth of internet took place the web one if we say so we had http or hypertext transfer protocol or we had html of writing a website hypertext machine language xml javascript flash we went to web 2 which was 
2.0 was from uh, 2000 to 2010 probably where we had come out with different kind of connotation as well as OWL, OpenID, AJAX, Atom, SQRL, that everything went around it. 2010, the last decade that we were talking about it is Web 3.0, wherein we look for semantic searches, we look for web blog, social media searching, keyword searching, this exploded altogether and now presently we are in experiencing the web 4.0 as in 20 to 30 where it is becoming artificial intelligence we are talking about machine language we are talking about cloud computing we are talking where the machine is able enable to take decisions which are logical which makes sense on behalf of the human being per se Yes, let us understand or summarize the example of transactional alternative between businesses, consumers and government organization. Let us look from the supplier point of view as in the content being being plotted on that X axis and the consumer point of view in terms of content and services on the Y axis. If you look into it, we have three continuum, the consumer, the business or the organization and the government, something similar with the consumer, the business and the organization and there comes the nine great framework altogether. We have consumer to consumer example being eBay or peer to peer, Skype and so on and so forth. We have business to consumer as transactional in terms of Amazon, e uh, relationship building as in business petroleum or BP, British petroleum, sorry. Brand building would be Unilever, which is looking into B2C. Then we have G2C or government to consumers, national government transactional tax, intention, collection, national government informations, local government services, and so on and so forth. Then comes around C2B or consumer to businesses, as in price line, your feedback, your communities, your campaign. Then comes B2B, something which business to business is concerned, transactional, which is all about Euro office, media owned, or media. Uh, media owned or media earned perhaps or probably media paid for is b2b marketplaces that we talk about it government to business or g2b is government services and transactional again related to tax again related to legal uh, regulations again related to all legalities and formalities of the land that comes around it then we come to the consumers to goods Government. Consumers to goods is all about feedback to the government that has been given through pressure groups, through individuals, through mooting of the opinion polls. We have the business to consumers, uh, business to government or B2G, where there is a feedback given for, to the government from the business people as to what kind of incentive it is required or as in what kind of hurdles they are facing as, as, as in what kind of taxation regulation that the industry is expecting. And last but not the least would be government to government. Now we are talking about the provincial government, we are talking about the federal government and there are government that comes around it. Um, so this is where intergovernment services comes around, the exchanges of information, certain taxes are co collected by the provincial government, certain taxes by the federal government, how the tax issues has to be shared and so on and so forth. Now these are things that needs to be taken into consideration. So cost efficiency, yes, we are looking for cost efficiency. We are increasing the speed in which supplies can be obtained. We are increasing the speed when goods can be delivered or dispatched. We are looking to reduce cost in terms of sales and purchasing. We are looking to reduce cost in terms of operations per se. Now, this is what we are actually striving for. <coughs> Competitive drivers is customer demand, improving the range and quality of service offer, avoid, avoiding losing market shares to the business, already using e-commerce thereby. This is what we should be doing around it. So we, yes, we have cost and efficiency driver, competitiveness drivers per se, and things like that. Let us understand why certain digital businesses services in certain European countries, how they are being utilized and what are the impact thereby. So let, let me give you with an example which I have already stated at the very beginning of this presentation. Let's say a website that failed because of spike in visitor traffic after a peak hours. You know why? Because servers are not able to understand or handle the amount of traffic we are looking into it. So the, the advertising campaign is very successful, but at the peak hours, it goes, it crashes. The servers are not been able to handle. So what has happened, your campaign is very good, but your hardware was not able to support it. So there was a mismatch altogether. Hackers penetrating, penetrating the security of system. 
and probably stealing credit card details thereby. Now, this is one of the pertinent problems that comes around it. We need to install a number of firewalls continuously. A company email customers without receiving the permission. Now, this is again a breach of privacy that comes around it. It is very annoying for you to receive a phone call probably or email probably if these are unsolicited in the very first place. This is very wrong, ethically wrong altogether. Problems with fulfillment of goods orders online, meaning customer orders going missing or delayed and the customer never returns home. We are talking about email customizations per se. What happens? How does it go around it? The perception of this risk may have limited adoption of digital business in many organizations, which is suggested by the data thereby as what we keep on seeing around here a simple stage model for a buy side and a sell side e-commerce a very simple stage for you to understand the basic modeling stage reviewing on the sell side and the buy side is shown this shows how companies will be introduced in more complex technology and extend the process when the digital business is already enabled and successfully flourishing being accepted by the general public thereby this is what we look forward to it. Here we are, the sell side and e-commerce, what I've been talking about it, a simple stage model which comes around it. Remember in the sell side, sell side, we have the email marketing as step one, brochure, brochures, uh, catalog sites in the website, step two, interactive side as in your feedback or as in when you, when the, you let the customer to choose, pick and choose colors, pick and choose specification. Stage four is online ordering. Stage five is relationship building and stage six is site opt optimization. I hope it is very clear, right? Email marketing is sensitizing, brochureware or cataloging, telling the customer what all products are available. Interactive sites wherein you are allowing the customers to configure the product towards the sites. I suppose there are many mobile phones with a hard drive which are different. The mobile phones with a color size are different. You can choose, the customer can choose everything based on his or her choices. They can choose to pay online in a different fashion or in a, a host of fashion available op options available to them. Building relationships, dedicated relationships, site optimization is what we are looking at, sell side. Similarly, on a buy side, the stage one will be reviewing suppliers as to who all are, all are going to give you the material, who are eager to do business with you. Table. Stage two is to understand the stock availability, how fresh they are, how what is the location from your business side how, how much sense does it makes to have uh, in case if there are ex excess product to be ordered in case there are something something goes wrong with the product will there be a buyback arrangement stage three is online catalog stage four again an online ordering probably similar to your sell site Stage five is integrated databases and the last stage is supply chain optimization. So this is the two simple state model of buy side and the sell side for an e-commerce uh, website or business or digital business. With this, I come to an end of this presentation. Thank you for watching this presentation.